A new milestone for Sagamon State University. Today, James Dayringer registered for classes. He pushed enrollment past 4,000 students for the first time in SSU's 20-year history. The 1990s began on a positive note, with Sangamon State hitting a major enrollment goal. This is our 17th consecutive semester of enrollment growth. We expect to hit uh, close to 4,100 uh, this semester. And part of it, I think, is the reputation is improving. I think the word's getting out, and our faculty are helping with recruitment. Uh, so it's many things. Of course, the students are why we're here. And uh, if we didn't have the students here, we wouldn't be celebrating. And we're most grateful because all of our past surveys have indicated that the, the primary source of our recruitment are, is the recommendation of our current students. The campus set a new goal of reaching 5,000 students by the year 2000. That meant launching an aggressive marketing campaign. Experience Sangamon State University. Please join us this spring. Enroll in one of more than 500 courses offered at SSC's main campus, its downtown center, and at Millican University in Decatur. Sangamon State at 20, a record of achievement, a promise for the future. In the summer of 1990, President Long presented a plan to the Board of Regents, suggesting Sangamon State should recruit a more diverse student body and consider admitting freshmen and sophomores. Through the 90s, um, you know, it became clear that, that the original dream of the upper division institution and in achieving 10,000 students with purely an upper division population was just not going to happen. Um, the, uh, and I think our, our, uh, our leadership did have the foresight to say we have to be able to do uh, you know, the, freshman, the, the freshman students on the campus if we were going to survive. As enrollment increased, the demand for on-campus housing grew. Nine new student apartment buildings opened their doors in the early 90s. Over 300 students were now living on campus. We really found ourselves in not only a, a crowded but an overcrowded situation. Uh, we were turning people away, we were maintaining waiting lists, so we had reached kind of the saturation point where we really did need to expand. Springfield is not a college town and our students were having real problems finding places to live. Students come to town with no background and no family history in the Springfield area. Springfield is a village or town or whatever. It is a small town that happens to have 100,000 people living in it. And a lot of things are still done by who you know and whatever, whatever. Well, college students were still seen as outsiders. They had no money, they had no credit rating, they had no anything, and they were having a very difficult time renting places in town. President Long oversaw the campus's 20th anniversary celebration in 1990, but would step down only months later after six years in office. I probably learned from Durward Long's um, tenure here um, something about executive leadership, and it was this, that you bring top-level executives in for a given purpose, and eventually they will accomplish their goals and or complete their purpose and eventually the campus will turn on them. Much like Lacey's presidency, Long's was a bit rocky at times, especially when it came to his relationship with the faculty. One of my m biggest memories is that when, uh, when Durwood Long came in, that during those years it, there was real big struggles in terms of the faculty union contracts with the president. Dr. Naomi B. Lynn would take over as the fourth and final president of Sangamon State University in July 1991. I had a position as dean of the College of Public and Urban Affairs at uh, Georgia State University and of course Sangamon State was famous for public affairs. When I arrived there was a great deal of stress at the time and uh, it was not a happy place. There was a great deal of anger and then the first, when I arrived, the uh, governor had frozen the salaries so that we didn't know how we were going to meet the next payroll. Besides a change in leadership, the year's events included the announcement of an extension of 11th Street from Stevenson Drive to Toronto Road, thus creating a new front door for the university. Shortly after the university's third permanent structure, the Health and Sciences Building would open its doors in January 1992. 
-hmm. I was very lucky because when I came in, my predecessor had already gotten the funds. You know, getting the initial funds from the state, it's a big mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. But we did open the health and science mm -hmm. building. And uh, that was quite an addition. Sangamon State's soccer team returned to the national sports spotlight in 1993 when they won their third NAIA national championship. <laughs> Confidence was high even at the start of the season. This is the best ever. And I mean it. And I don't, uh, I don't lie. You can't lie in this business because the product is out there, people are going to see it. And uh, if you don't believe me, ask my assistants. Around the same time, the SSU Weekly addressed widespread rumors about the reorganization of the Board of Regents. Governor Jim Edgar considered the board to be a waste, and change appeared inevitable. One of our ills for the first 25 years was that we operated within a fairly weak university governance system, I mean external governance a governing board called the Board of Regents, which was not a very strong board with a lot of clout with the legislature. President Lynn's office issued a memo reassuring the campus community that no matter what happened, SSU would continue to thrive. The future of the Board of Regents was uh, very tenuous for many, many reasons. So we had, as an administration, as a faculty, had to think about the future of this campus and for me, it was very clear that the winning combination, if we were lucky enough, uh, we could go with the University of Illinois. It was also important to me that we be the third campus of the University of Illinois. After 25 years at Sangamon State University, the school was on the verge of becoming the third campus of the University of Illinois. Some of the people who'd been here in the charter faculty in the early years felt that it meant that Sangamon State and its vision had failed and that we were being taken over. Uh, I didn't feel that way. I thought that it was true that some of our experiments hadn't worked, but we tried so many. The important thing was how many of them succeeded. A lot of people struggled and worked and a lot of tact and a lot of political sophistication had to be used to make it happen. It was a difficult adjustment for some faculty. For others, it was absolutely the best thing that could happen. I still believe it was the best thing.